All right, got a Hawk 250 video. This pretty much applies to any of the Chinese enduro bikes with this uh, Honda CG clone engine. What I'm doing today is going to be adjusting the valve, flash, clearance, however you want to say it. Um, I'm going to try to get in here and show you exactly how to do it. But this is a brand new bike. Uh, they're extremely tight from the factory. So tight that it didn't want to idle. So I already messed with it a little bit. But I figured I'd make a video kind of showing you exactly what to do. This is a 2019. I just got it. Uh, it's easy to do. You don't need to remove the gas tank or anything like that. You definitely need to have some mechanic skills or you need to learn them if you're going to own one of these Chinese bikes. They do require maintenance, adjustments. They're not as forgiving as the Japanese bikes. So, But it's all easy stuff. But I'm going to show you how to do it. So first thing, make sure you start with a completely cold bike. Let it sit overnight. Whatever you got to do. You don't want any heat on the engine at all. Despite what some people may say. You want it cold. Alright, these are the only tools you really need. 10 millimeter wrench. And some feeler gauges here. I'll throw a link in the description. Amazon where you can get a set of these if you don't have them. Pretty much get them anywhere. But got to have that. All right, and then the specs that we're going to try to shoot for here, there's a lot of discussion which how you want to do it. The key is they don't want to be too tight, but you don't want too much ticking. But it's better to be loose than tight. But on that note, we usually go a little bit higher on the exhaust valve since it heats up so much more, give it a little bit more room for expansion. So you can go up to about 4 or 5, 0.004 or 5 inches on the exhaust, 0 0.002 or 3 on the intake. Um, somewhere in between there will be good. So the first thing we need to do, come around here to the other side of the bike. We're going to take this cover off right here, and this is where we're going to be able to see our timing marks. And we'll take this little cover, o-ring cover off right here, and this is how we can turn our engine. So I guess we'll need one more tool to turn the engine, unless you want to rock it, but it's much easier just to do it this way. You want to turn it in a counterclockwise motion. I'll show you how it looks here in just a second. Then we'll take our 10 millimeter bolts, and on this side of the engine there is one 10 millimeter bolt. The other side there are two. You take the three bolts out, and you can take the valve cover off. It looks like you need to take the tank off, but you don't. Trust me. Just work it on out of there. You'll be able to see what we're doing. All right, we'll start over on this side. Said, so just take this one. This one bolt out here. Might be a little tight on a new engine. Get it cracked loose. Alright. Over here to the other side, get the other two bolts. Alright, so once you got all three bolts loose, just pull the valve cover up. Be mindful there's a little rubber o-ring gasket. You don't want to damage that when you're taking it off. So just kind of work the valve cover forward here and out. So here you can see this is a little rubber gasket. Make sure that's in good shape. When you go to reinstall it, you don't want to smash it in any weird ways. Damage it. Okay. You can always make sure it's lubed up a little bit and pressed back down into the housing before you put it back on. Just set this out of the way in your hair. So here's what we're dealing with. Here is the nuts that we'll be loosening to just the valves. And actually, once you loosen the adjusting nuts, we'll get to that in a minute. I gotta show you the other part first, but you'll actually be turning this little, you can see, you can turn it by hand, but it's got that little like square end. That is how you turn the valve up and down. 
you loosen this, this is just this, like the lock nut. It basically locks the valve in the position. And then that moves inside of here to go up and down. So that might be confusing to someone who's never done this before. This doesn't just go up and down on its own. But you can see we got flash here. So I'm gonna go around to the other side and show you how we get it set up. All right, so back over here, I'll pull this off here. And there is a O-ring behind here, so keep that in mind. You want to pull the top off here, turn this one loose. This gives you access to the flywheel, so you can read the timing marks. There's also a O-ring here. Just keep that in mind, if it stays in there, that's fine. Keep that in mind so you don't lose it. All right, so once we got this off, take your 14 millimeter socket, deep socket, it goes on the crank bolt there, and then you'll be rotating the engine, let's say counterclockwise. And we're looking for top dead center. And how you know you've reached top dead center is on the crank, you will see a little T. It'll look like a one with a line next to it. And there's a couple lines there, that's not what we're looking for, right? There. I don't know if you can see that. There's a T. With a line, and it should match the line on here. Now there's a chance we're 180 degrees out. And what we're looking for is both valves to be closed. And if I spin the engine over, you'll see the valves move. So if it's on the exhaust stroke and you watch, you'll see a time when the exhaust valve is closing. The exhaust valve is on the front here. And almost immediately the intake valve starts to open. That is on the exhaust stroke, not on the compression stroke. So you don't want to set it there. When it reaches top dead center, you'll know because both valves will not be moving at all when you see that T. So since I just hit the exhaust stroke, I'm going to rotate it around again. should be in the right spot now. I'm right here at the T on the line and both valves have no pressure. You can wiggle them around. You can see that they both wiggle. That's how we know we're in the right spot. All right, so I just rotated it around again to where it's 180 degrees out. Now if I wiggle these up here, this is in my case, there's no, you can't feel any movement. So that's how, another way to tell if you're on the exhaust stroke sometimes, unless they're really loose. So I'm gonna rotate the engine around again. And I can feel the compression. Almost there, okay, there. Now if I wiggle these, you can actually hear them move My intake side's a little tight, but the exhaust side is kind of loose. All right, so now that we've got that, we're ready to loosen these up. And you just need to loosen counterclockwise these nuts on the top here, just like a couple turns. Like I said, you're just, that's not how they're adjusted. We're just breaking the lock washer loose, basically, or lock nut here, loose. And that will then allow us to turn the valve by hand. All right, so once you got them loose, that's where our feeler gauges come in. Okay, so here is my point zero zero three inch feeler gauge, and it's got millimeters below it and inches on the top. And what I want this to do is, I want to stick this between the valve 
in the, the rocker arm there. And well, we want to adjust it so there's a slight drag. All right, so you see I've got the feeler gauge in here. And what you want to feel is a slight drag. So once you got the lock nut loosened, I can turn it to increase so there's less drag, or I can tighten it down, turning it clockwise, and then it pinches the feeler gauge, and that means it's too tight. You just want just a little bit of drag on the feeler gauge. So we've got our point zero zero three feeler gauge in here, and once it's just a little bit of drag, we're going to turn the lock nut only and lock it down, and make sure that we're still in adjustment here. And then once you tighten it back down with the 10 millimeter wrench, you want to recheck it again because sometimes that can lock it up a little too tight. So better to be a little too loose than a little too tight, but that's the gist of it. Hopefully that makes sense and you see, you'll see, see it wants to fit just right in there. I'm going to take my socket, lock this back down here. Feels pretty good. Yeah, it's sliding in there. Just a little bit of drag on the feeler gauge. And we're tightened back down. So now we'll move on to the exhaust side. Put, change it over to 0 0.005 inches on my feeler gauge. I'm set pretty good. It's dragging a little bit. Might be dragging just a hair too much. I'm just gonna back it off just a little bit. It's too much now. I'm gonna get it down to just feel it. See, it's too tight. I can't move it. You just feel it dragging. And that's how you know. In the right spot. A little more off. Okay. And once again, we'll tighten it down. And after we tighten it down, we're going to check to make sure it didn't move, tighten up on us. bit of drag there. You can see how it drops down when I take it out. And if you want to test your other one, take a bigger feeler gauge. It should not be able to fit in there if you set it right. So you say it's sliding into one side and not going all the way through, so that's good. You can see. I mean, you can't really see it, but the stem is not perfectly flat on both sides, but... Alright, so I hope that makes sense. I double-checked, again, with the feeler gauges. Went up a couple sizes just to make sure I couldn't get them in there after I had everything locked down and made sure that the ones I could get in there were still in. So we are good. Again, here's what your top dead center mark looks like. Looking for a T next to the line. Also looks like a one upside down one, however you want to look at it. So once you get that set, we're gonna go ahead and rotate the engine around, make a complete revolution, and we're gonna check our gaps one more time. As long as everything's good, you can go ahead and put your valve cover back on. Again, when you put your valve cover back on, make sure that your gasket doesn't get pinched or out of alignment, otherwise you'll have a, an oil leak and bolt it down just snug you don't want to crank it down and then put your covers back in again snug them down there's a rubber o-ring you don't need to crank them down and then we'll be ready to fire it up i noticed a big big improvement when i did this like i said it wouldn't even idle correctly before it didn't want to run it would just stall out now it runs so definitely something you want to do something you want to do after I say right away when you get the bike and then, you know, every couple hundred miles or so, check it and adjust your valves, especially until it's done breaking in.
All right, got everything back together. We're all done. Last step is just to fire it up, make sure everything runs good. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, give me a like. Leave a comment if you have a question in the description. And then subscribe if you want to see some more Hawk 250 videos or your other Chinese bike videos because I'm going to be doing a series of videos on some of the upgrades that I think you should do on these things. So subscribe and follow along. We'll see you next time. Thanks.